Hey everybody, um, today we're going to look at a Dynamo script uh, for, for placing MEP fabrication um, hangers and we're going to look at some of the different resources I use to solve this, this problem. And I, I put problem, you know, in quotes. I don't know really if this is a problem. Uh, also, this is not the final script. This is just the beginning because I think the big takeaway from this video is the resources, not so much the script itself. Uh, because you can apply, um, I think, that this process to many other problems that you're trying to solve with Dynamo. Um, now, I will have a completed script in the future. Uh, for now, though, this script, all it does is it places one hanger on a, um, an MEP uh, pipe. And so, um, even though it's not the completed one, you can still download it below. There's a OneDrive link. And feel free to just download it. You don't even have to, to finish this video. The script should work. And you also will find the uh, Revit uh, file as well. So feel free to check those out and use them however way you want. In the future, I'll, I'll put another video out and with the with the completed script. So how did this come about, and why am I even messing with this? Um, it was more for just it just sounded interesting to see if I could actually figure it out. Uh, I haven't really had any chance to mess with MEP uh, fab parts, and I was watching this video by. Travis Voss and Luke Fertrosky and um, they talk about uh, the the rods of, for the hangers because the rods go up to the structure and for them uh, they need them to go a little bit further these guys are you know they do work in the the fab world so uh, if you're interested in that I definitely recommend checking out um, this video because the script that I'm creating I don't know if it's really even that useful I know fabricators um, it's a little bit more detailed for them like they need to know where these things are going and if they're cl clashing with stuff and so you know automatically placing a bunch of hangers at um, you know every four feet may not be uh, a reasonable script for them I'm not sure but again that's why I say the takeaway from this is the the process of just the different resources I used and the way that I approached um, solving this issue so I hope you guys find find this helpful um, feel free to leave any comments um, or reach out if you have any questions um, and yeah so let's get into it so um, here is the the pipe and this is what we're gonna place the uh, the hanger on and um, and then here's the dynamo script so it's a pretty simple Dynamo script. We're using the Dyna Fabrication 2017 package. Um, this node here, so this is an exploded node. Um, this is uh, this one right here. And so I just grabbed it so I could see what was going on in it. This is the Python script uh, that I wrote that creates the hanger. Uh, and it's a pretty basic script. There's some, some um, libraries that we're bringing in and then um, we're getting the document now so before I show you these I'll show you the actual method so down here is the fabrication part dot create hanger method and I think this is a good time to show you one of the resources I've used and I'm sure um, if you're into the Revit API you've seen this before but if not definitely check this out um, so here I was able to search for hanger um, and then find this method here are these um, these different methods now I haven't done this personally like in Python to, to see how this actually works uh, maybe it's something I can test in the future in my own uh, like module but you can see here the create hanger method there's three of them and I think the way that Revit figures this out uh, is that depending on the objects and how many of the inputs you put in it determines which hanger or which method to use because I ran into one issue where uh, you know this is the method I'm trying to use because I'm trying to associate the hanger to the um, to the uh, to the elements or to the pipe uh, this one creates like a freestanding hanger this create method here 
But this one here, I created it, and for the element ID, I was passing in a string value. And you can see here, it's actually looking for the element ID like element. And so what it was saying, the error was that it couldn't find a method that matched what I was passing through as the input. So I think based off of the number of inputs that you put into this method and the objects that you're putting in um, as the inputs, kind of determine what method that uh, you know Dynamo is going to use. So it's kind of interesting. I just figured I'd point that out because I haven't tested that or used it or ran into this um, before. But anyways, as long as you have the right items in it, it'll run, it'll use this method and um, everything will work properly. Um, and so with that said, you can see here, I've got the document. And so what we're doing is just unwrapping the pipe and then grabbing pipe.document. That gives us the right, the right thing. Um, and I think we could also just do current document. I'm not so sure about that, but that may be a good one. You just have that as an input. I figure this would be easy enough. Just grab it and have no input. Just get the, the document that way. Um, and then here we're taking an element ID. Um, our, our element ID is input one. And that's actually coming from this Python script, which grabs the actual element ID. So like I mentioned, I was passing in like an integer or a string and it was saying that was the wrong, like this isn't the right method for this. And, um, what we needed was the actual element ID object so you can see here that's what we have and so that's the um, that's one of the other inputs the next one is the the, the fabrication service uh, button now I did have some trouble with this and again the Revit API docs was really helpful because I was able to search this get button and then also um, something that is super helpful is because I was able to do fabrication service and then figure out all the different attributes and methods to it um, like the get button the way I did that uh, or I figured that out and I'll just show you guys real quick so and I guess my point like you know how do I know that this was a method for the fabrication service um, uh, item or object was that, and we'll just, we'll grab this. Because originally, this is what I did. I inputted this, and that was our input. And it was saying, hey, we need a button. We don't need a, the service here. And so I passed this in to a separate Python script, just like you see here. And then what I do is I'll just rename this to something a little bit easier, and then do input zero and then the output is dr and then data and then by doing that you can see all the different methods and attributes uh, for that object and you can see that there's a git button and then um, I just searched for that in the Revit API docs, found that um, when you call that method, all you need to do is input two, two of the um, two variables, one of those variable, var one of those variables being the, uh, the service group, and in this is instance, it's the hangers, which is index two. So that's why in the Python script, you can see two. Um, and then I think, and I'll have to look up on the and I'll drag this over just so that you guys can see so the get method you can see is under the fabrication service methods so get get button method and then we can see it takes in the group index uh, and the button index now I'm I'm, I don't work with the, the fabrication stuff too, too much, so um, I actually just put zero for the group index. Now the button index I used, or sorry, for the group index I put two because um, because uh, I, Dyn or the Dyna fabrication package uh, did have a 
a, a node for this and so that was really helpful in figuring out what the logic was behind that because um, you can see there's fitting joints and hangers and so obviously it's a hanger that we're trying to to place and this here these these values you can see if we drag this over um, they pertain to these so we have fittings joints and hangers so now I'll bring this back and so you know for that I knew for the group index um, it was two because uh, that's the hangers and so and then for zero which is the button index I actually didn't find a lot of information on that but I just put zero now is that going to be right uh, all the time I don't know but that's why I say this is just a, a working script for now uh, the completed one will be in the future and I'll figure out exactly what value needs to go there for all the different instances um, but it worked so I left it and um, and so now we've got our connector and all I did for the connector is just loop through the I think it's like the connector set and I appended each connector to a uh, pipe connector set list and so and then I indexed into that list the first item in it so it just grabbed a pipe or, or the connector the first connector there's no logic to it to how it's grabbing it which is something we'll have to build into the future script and how we're actually grabbing those connectors so that we properly grab the right connectors uh, for each pipe if we're grabbing you know if, especially if we're trying to um, automate placing hangers on a whole bunch of different pipes uh, we'll have to have some logic behind that but for now I just grab the first connector um, this double is the distance from that connector so in this case it's two feet from that connector um, just like you saw in that um, example so if I change that to four it'll put it put it as at four feet um, and then for this boolean uh, and again the revit like the documentation will explain each of these methods um, but for, for this uh, the boolean is referring to if it's going up to structure so does it extend up to structure if you place a hanger I think by default it does that already but you could set this to false and even use um, like the example in that AU class the the rod extension uh, methods to actually put in a, a unique a unique value there um, but for now we're just defaulting to true so it just extends up to the above structure um, and then down here we're, do, we're opening up our transaction and then we're just running our our fabrication part um, create hanger method and then you can see here um, all of those different inputs and variables we can see those listed down here document fabrication service button element ID connector double and bool I matched it to exactly what it looked like in the um, in the Revit API docs just so it's simple for you guys um, just to know exactly what's going on um, but yeah I mean that's that's kinda it uh, for the script you know it's not too complicated uh, like I said there was a little bit of just trying to figure out like really the logic behind all these things how do they work how are they interconnected what are their services mean um, there's still some things I could probably build into it uh, in the future like over here what we're getting is all the loaded services so if you have multiple loaded services which I don't know um, how that works but you'll have maybe there's a way and I'm sure there is a way to grab the service class from from the the pipe itself um, rather than trying to figure out just by loading it or getting all the loaded fabrication services so anyways again that'll be like in the the final script we'll, we'll work through some of those issues but since we changed that double value to four we'll just run it again and maybe I never ran it the the first time and showed you guys um, so let's run this and then you'll see that it places the the hanger so I'll set it back to two run it again and then you'll see places the hanger there 
change it to six. So anyways, um, you know, it places the hangers on the pipes. Um, and so the final are like a full script. We may want to put in a just the distance and then it puts a hanger at every four feet on every single pipe. Um, but anyways, uh, you know, that's kind of the script. Some Another really useful tool, um, I think, that you should definitely have if you're diving into the Revit API, you know, is the, is the Revit lookup. So, you know, you can dive into to any, any kind of object, um, figure out what's going on, you know, like, um, So if we snoop this current pipe here, and we want to figure out the connectors, so what we can do is, is scroll down. We can see here connector manager, uh, and this is exactly what I did. Um, I didn't know what this meant. I just figured that, okay, maybe that has the connector information. So. I clicked on that and then you can see here um, we've got a property called connectors and within that has a connector set so if you look at that we have two connectors we have the origin which is something we may have to use in the actual script to determine which connector to use um, but we can see the radius the shape the origin and so what I've done in in, in the Python script was just a loop through this this uh, connectors property which is a connector set and appended these two items to a list and then and then just indexed the first one so in that case it was um, this connector and then um, and then place the hanger from that connector two feet or four or six feet um, so again you know in the future the future script will have to 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 uh, to have some logic behind that but I wanted to show you guys all these different things that that I use to figure out this problem um, you know there's so many different resources and so many different things to learn so I just wanted to show you a bit of the process of how I approach this problem um, you know again I don't know how usable it is if you're in the fabrication world and this is useful you know for you definitely download this you know take it and, and make it your own um, and definitely reach out if you have any questions but anyways thanks for watching um, and I will see you guys in the the next video